This is the plaintiff, Gerald Downing. He says the defendant was a young, hard-working guy who we employed, and he thought the kid was a good person, so we loaned him some money. Turns out that guy just walked off the job, never paid him back, and he won't be played like a sucker from the likes of this little punk who still owes him the $875 he loaned him, so he's suing. This is the defendant, Brandon DeFilippo. He says the plaintiff's a previous employer who just won't go away no matter what he does. The guy tried to steal his last paycheck from him when he quit. He's owed and is now coming after him for money he simply didn't borrow and does not owe. He's accused of going low down on a loan. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff loaned the defendant money and says the guy stiffed him. But the defendant says the plaintiff is a mess that just won't go away. It's the case of going low down on a loan. Thank you, Douglas. You're Gerald welcome. Downing, you are suing your former employee, Brandon DiFilippo, for $875 that you say he owes you for loans that you made to him in order for him to keep his credit up. Yes. Um, okay, while he was working for you. Tell me about that. What happened? Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> Brandon came to work for us in January of 2016, I mean, 2016, and in the first few months of his employment, I was very proud of him. He worked very hard. He's a hard worker and was very respectful, and I, we start to, started to get to know each other. Well, as we started to get to know each other, he brought up an issue about his credit. And he had a couple loans on commercial loans, and he had a couple for school loans. Um, I was very concerned about those loans, and I was very concerned because he wasn't paying them. So I let him know my opinion about not paying credit cards or school loans, which are never forgiven, that I would help him out with this. What I would do is give him $125 a month if he matched it, but I want to see the statements so that we could put $50 this week and $50 this week so that all four creditors would be happy and his credit rate would go up after a couple of years. Okay. And at the rate he was at, he couldn't even buy a car. So anyway, around April is when I made a deal with him of $125 and I paid him for six months. Uh, 100, 125. What was the agreement, though? You were paying 125, and he was going to match the 125, right. so he can keep his bills afloat. So, and was he supposed to pay you back the 125 you were paying? He was supposed to pay me back, but there was no hurry because at that time he had no money. Right, but there was an agreement that he would pay you back. Oh yes, it I wasn't even... a gift on your part. Right, because I sent him an email <laughs> about the amounts and the amount paid, and he wrote back in five days, "Yes, I I will pay you and get you the receipts." And I have the emails Let here. Let me see those emails. So what ends up happening? <clears throat> he so works for you for how long? I stopped giving him the money in May because he wasn't giving me any statements of proof of payment. And that concerns me because of the track record. So then um, around December, uh, we get information that he can't drive the truck because of his driving record. So we decided... Wait, meaning what? You get information from whom? The insurance company? The insurance company, yes. Oh, that they would not cover him. They would not cover him for insurance because <laughs> of his driving record. And I said to my son, Brandon's a good worker. I don't want to lose him. We'll get a driver for him. And we did get a driver for him. And then um, he, he was uh, on January 16th of 2017. He could no longer drive our truck. And... That day, I asked him to run down and get some gas in the truck, not even thinking it. He went down there to get gas. Oh, you gas. had him drive? Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that day. Actually, he was in the middle of a delivery, wasn't he? What yes, kind of, what do yes. you guys deliver? Kitchens. Okay. Kitchens so and So you had him do, you had him drive a commercial vehicle for a commercial purpose. He had no insurance. So if he gets into an accident, what was going to happen with, do you have a commercial driver's license? No. So... That would have been my fault if he got in an accident, if he didn't have an insurance. <clears throat> you were worried about what it would do to your license. Yes, Your Honor. Um, because you thought that they could go after you? I was always told the driver's always at fault no matter what. Well, they could sue you too. Mm -hmm. um, so 
but the bottom line is you find out you're driving. According to you, you find out you're driving without insurance. When and how? When I was on the delivery, I called his phone. He didn't answer, so I called his son, his partner, and he told me that I wasn't insured. How did it come up, though? I was just driving, and it, I just thought of it because they told me the week before that I might not be able to be on the insurance anymore, which oh, I didn't okay. understand. So. All right. So, um, and, when, and, so, and the son said, oh, yeah, dad didn't tell you. You're not insured. Yeah, dad actually sent me on a delivery. Okay. And then so what happened? And but, then, you know, he's, kind of, he's very fatherly towards you. I mean. And then I went back to the. Which you liked at some point. You may think it's uh, aggressive now, but at some point um, you didn't mind having an older person who believed in you and you took his help. Um, that 125 you were taking every month, his that's, money was green that's enough. That's not incorrect. Or that's not correct, the amount that I was given. How and much it, were you given? It was different every week. We never kept track. He gave me 125 the first week, and then sometimes it would be 60 bucks, sometimes 70 something like that. And it didn't go on for six months either. It was a lot less time than that. So how much, according to you, did he loan you? I honestly don't know, Your Honor. We didn't keep track. Well, not were you supposed to pay him back? Every amount. I tried to so pay him back. So then how can you com uh, combat what he's saying is the amount if you weren't keeping track? I tried to pay him back three separate occasions, and every time he told me to put the money back in my pocket and forget about it. So after the third time of trying to pay him back, I did forget about it because he mm -hmm. told me to. Okay. And so when is this email that he's going to show me about you paying him back? That was before <laughs> I had tried to pay him back. Oh. And uh, he goes through, oh, well, in this email, before you tried to pay him back, he says, uh, I lent you money to help pay off your debt so that your credit rating would rise from being poor. Amounts are yada, yada, 875. It's due by July 31st. He writes you that on June 7th. And you don't say, no, that's not the right amount. What you say is, yes, I know. I have one of the receipts I will give you tomorrow. I'm just waiting on the other two to come in. I can start paying you back weekly this Friday if that's okay. All right. And then in January, he sends you an email. For the, he copies you on the email that he had sent you in June and says, you need to respond to them about the money you, you borrowed from me. I emailed you earlier about telling me what type of payment plan you would like. You gave me no response. Actually, he did give you a response. He said, I'll start paying you back weekly. Um, but I guess that didn't happen in June. You agreed to start paying me in June. You've paid nothing towards the loan. When did you stop working for him? January uh, 16th. Okay. So. After I had tried to pay him back three times. Did he try to pay you back three times? If he did, I don't remember. But if he did do that, I know he didn't have a lot of money. And I yeah, would say, so what we'll difference would it make? So he should, be, he should be penalized and you should get to skate on the loan? Well, um, I tried, and then I'd worked for him for seven more months, and it literally was never brought up once okay, again. Okay, what's being brought up now? What's your defense? The defense can't be he was, he was so paternal that he was giving me more time to pay. That can't be your defense. No, he was telling me not to pay at all. I had tried three times, and then he literally never brought it up again. Uh, uh, did you ever tell him this loan is forgiven? Never. Okay, so it doesn't sound like it, but... Um, you know, it, it, I mean, him saying, put the money back in your pocket, you can pay me later, is not the same. All the evidence I have is that there was a loan outstanding and that you're supposed to pay it. Now, you, he, what ends up happening is you get really mad when you find out that you're driving without insurance and you park the truck where? At the, at the shop. At the, you take it back? To, yes. Okay. And then you leave work that day because yes. you're furious and you don't, there's nobody physically there to yell at or get mad at. Yes. And, um, couldn't you get mad by phone with the son? I called both of them. Neither of them answered, so I sent an email to both of them. The son Saying, was on I'm vacation. really sorry. If you want to fire me for leaving today, I'm leaving today. I'm really angry. I can't believe this is my license you're talking about. Why would you put me in this position? You know, he's got a point. Um, why would you put me in? I mean, what would probably happen, you and I both know, is that if there had been an accident, then they'll go after the deep pocket. They're not going to go. But, but technically, he's right. They can go after both of you, and it could affect his license. He could suspend his license. That's important. So he's mad. All right? So what happens? I see that you get an, uh, an email from someone saying, weird choice you made yesterday. We're going to find a different job for you. We don't want to lose you. You're a good employee. So what happened? You didn't want the different job? No, I didn't get offered that. I just got fired through a voicemail. Oh, okay. So who sent you that, e that text or email? That was my son, Marshall. And then you decided, no, I don't like that he walked off? No, and when, then he, he got no when he walked off, um, he deserted what we needed. I had a whole truckload of cabinets to deliver. I couldn't find him. None of my employees knew where he was. He didn't tell anybody, and he didn't stay there and wait. So I see the truck there, and I said, well, 
Brandon was fast on that one. The truck's back already. Another half hour, nothing from him. I okay, go well, out. Is it nothing from him, or is it you weren't picking up your messages, no, no, you weren't picking heard, up the phone, and you weren't reading your email? No, I, my phone was on. I didn't hear. I don't know when What time did you me. send the email? I'm not sure, Your Honor. I think well, 10 a.m. What time? I think 10 a.m. So if somebody stiffs you on a loan, is that immoral, or is it just the way of the world? No, that's immoral. You should take responsibility for your actions. We see so many of these cases, though, immoral or just the way things go? Um, it's immoral to the extent, obviously, um, you know, depending on the circumstances of the person, you know, it, it doesn't well, always okay, I mean, if somebody isn't really uh, like a hardship, but I'm talking about people who just blow you off. It's wrong. It's immoral. If someone does you the favor of lending you the money, you have the, the responsibility to pay them back. I have faith in humanity still, because the, the cases I've seen, people just don't pay back, going inside the courtroom. At 10.03 a.m., I apologize for sending this in an email versus in person, but you're not here today. Your father let me drive the truck to a delivery today and didn't mention I wasn't insured. Okay, he's not there. The son's not there. But was the father there? No. Was there staff there? There was one other secretary. Okay. She was busy. She was busy. <laughs> she, she, I mean, I didn't think to tell her either because she wasn't my boss. She was just a co-worker. All right, so anyway, you fired him at that point because right, you I felt that was wrong. It's fine. Right. You have a right to fire him. Yeah. All right, and he even admits you have a right to fire him. Yeah. All right, so now his wages come up and you don't pay the wages because he owes you 875 so you decide to keep the 400 you file uh, a claim with who the labor board mm -hmm. and you end up winning which that's he correct. should because yeah. you can't you got to go to court to sue him for the money <laughs> yeah, that he owes right. so did you end up paying his lawyer also or you didn't no, have, he a didn't have a lawyer we didn't oh, have a lawyer cuz otherwise you might have had to pay his lawyer yeah did you have to pay your lawyer I didn't have a lawyer either. Okay, both of you just went, told the story. It was and, $400. And, all right, so you paid him his wages, and now he's suing you for the money, and what is your defense? That, uh, well, I tried to pay him, and at that time he wouldn't take it, so at this time he can't collect it. Yeah, at that time he liked you. You were his employee. Now you're a guy who got mad and walked off the job and ended up causing a huge problem because the installers are on the other side, the homeowner's on the other side, the, the homeowner wants the stuff. Who ended up delivering the stuff and when? 74-year-old jury. Oh, just do it. All right, but <laughs> did you, you didn't take the set. You had installers on the other, or did you install it? No, we don't install. We just deliver. Oh, We're okay. Not so, but that meant you had to take all well, the... We'll drive the truck down, right? And, and then who'd you have on the other side? That... One contractor helped me out. Okay, all right. I paid him a little bit of money. All right, all right. Um, but that's, you know, okay. So, yeah, he has a right to still sue you. It doesn't change a contract that the two of you had. And when the labor board said you were right, what they were right about is that you are right, he cannot hold your, your, your wages hostage. He must pay you and then come to me and let me decide if this is a loan or a gift or what it is, all right? So it's not that the labor board told him to go away and pay you. The labor board, as far as they're concerned, the only thing that matters to them is the wages. All right? I am the person who has to decide if this is a loan or a gift, and I find that it's a loan. It's clear from your text in June that it was a loan. And just because a guy lets you keep it in your pocket for a little longer because he likes you, that doesn't mean that he can't collect today when he doesn't like you because um, you broke his heart. All right. But, you know, you really shouldn't be too heartbroken over it. I mean, I realize you feel that it was wrong, but I, I kind of side with him on how wrong it was to send him out without insurance because it is his license. Um, in any event, that means that I am finding in favor of the plaintiff in this case for the $875 plus, of course, your court costs. So that's my judgment. Good luck, folks. Where are you working now? Uh, currently nowhere. Oh. In between jobs. Oh. You need, you need a driver? No. <laughs> So the judge decides a loan is a loan, and Mr. T. Filippo, you got to give it back. Yeah. Eight seventy-five. Yeah. Don't, you know, I mean, he was really very nice to you. Honestly, yeah, I, I, I don't can't know. believe you don't feel like you owe it back to him. Uh, he told me I didn't, so yeah, but it's all I right. Mean, though. The judge made a decision. You're just taking that, and you, you don't feel any obligation to give it back to him at all. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> now that the judge says you have to. Yeah. Well, have you learned anything from all of this? Um. No, <laughs> honestly, no? Yeah, I'm just happy it's over with. No, well, okay, good enough. Okay, yeah. that's the way. I hope you don't see me back in court soon. All right, Mr. Downing. Well, you liked him at one time. How nice. are you? Nice Congratulations. I still like him. He just doesn't think right sometimes. Yeah. A few times. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, and, you, um, you're a very law, generous guy, I must well, say. I wanted to help him. I didn't have a father. He didn't have a father. Really? Yeah. Basically, his father never helped him. So you were kind of... I took him on to Pinch my hitting arm. as a yeah, dad. Yeah, huh? yeah. Well, congratulations. And I wish him luck. You're a nice guy. Okay.
Thank you very much. So are all you. Right, I sir? see you all the time. Well, thank you very much. That's good. <laughs> Harvey? So, you know, we get, all, we get cases like this all the time where people say, well, he forgave the loan. I didn't have to pay. Unless there is clear evidence that the loan is forgiven, the loan is still intact.